things. All right, so um, I want to move on to faking to be black, right? Um, I think you sent me this, yeah. Yeah, um, and we got somebody faking being black up in the observatory and went through Howard that way. And what you're going to deal with is somebody faked being black going to this one going to medical school and there's another one it came around a couple of years ago somebody quite a few people wrote books about how they fake being black to get scholarships let me um so i guess we can fake somebody all the way up next to the white house right let me um let me play this clip it's two minutes my next guest went to medical school this is back in 1998 he says he got in by pretending to be black despite having a mediocre grade point average, 3.1. Vijay Jojo Chokal Ingham is the author of Almost Black, and he joins me now. Okay, Vijay, would you please take us back to 1998 and tell us your story? So I am living proof of the hypocrisy and racism intrinsic in affirmative action. So back in college, I remember I met this light-skinned constitutional law professor at the University of Chicago, uh, we used to play pickup basketball named Barack Obama. And I remember looking at this dude and saying, if he can call himself black and go to Harvard, then why can't I? So when I decided to apply to medical school, I actually looked at the data that was published by the American Association of Medical Colleges. And I realized that I have a lot more likely to get into medical school if I said I was black than Asian American. So I shaved my head. I trimmed my long Indian eyelashes. I joined the organization of black students. And I applied to medical school as a black man. It worked beyond my wildest expectations. I got waitlisted at Washington University and the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine. Those are the third and fourth best med schools in the country. <sighs> and I got uh, into St. Louis University School of Medicine, despite the fact that my 3.1 GPA was dramatically lower than their average of 3.7 at the time. So, so I rode that affirmative action roller coaster all the way into medical school. But unfortunately, because of the new Supreme Court decision, you can't really do that anymore. Okay, okay that's a good story. But when you, once you got into medical school as a black man, uh, you're not of African heritage. I believe you're of Indian heritage. Did other Absolutely. black students find out? And what was their reaction to you? So, uh, you know, 100, so I, 100 students started. It's not like they disclosed to your school your race uh, or your fellow classmates your race. So I just appeared on the first day of class as myself with my normal hair. There were 100 students starting on the same day, so I just blended in. No one ever noticed that I was not the, or not the race I claimed to be in my application. L last one. You fully support the Supreme Court's ruling against affirmative action, right? Yes, I'm very proud to join Edward Bloom, Students for Fair Admission, and their efforts to end affirmative action. But I want to warn you guys, this is just the beginning. We're going to have to fight a battle to enforce this decision because Joe Biden is never going to enforce it. Vijay Jojo Chokal Ingram, thank you very much for being with us, sir. An eye opener, and we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. First off, that's complete bullshit because the Supreme Court did not outlaw affirmative action. They just said it could not be exclusively race based. See, that's the kind of abuse that the thing is subjected to. What we had initially was equality in emissions. And they used a standard for athletes all over the country, which was if you don't match the standard after two tests, uh, grade point average uh, assessment, then they'd look to see if there were other things that indicated you would be able to succeed and would contribute to the university or to society as a large, uh, as a larger aspect of things particular in this tendency to work on a team. So we said we need that for minorities. We had Japanese who added a lot of weight to the argument. Uh, it's interesting that they, some of them joined in the opposite side to something they helped set up. We had the Chicanos, we had the Native Americans. And, uh, the way it was originally construed, he never would have happened because we would have made an assessment on what kind of fallout would have happened to his community. And we'd like to have seen some sort of demonstration of that while he was going through undergrad. That's why 
major universities always wanted an essay on why you wanted to be admitted and what your extracurricular activities were. But you see, the affirmative action he was trying to take advantage of was a bastardization of it that was brought about by some black wannabe medical students at, at UC Berkeley, Cal Berkeley, who collaborated with the faculty and some others to destroy affirmative action in return for their admission. Affirmative action wasn't called that, it was just called equality in admissions. So the opinion Roberts wrote reads pretty much exactly like the prospects that and the proposals that were uh, pushed about in the late 60s to get what became affirmative action. So while we whoopee and you got somebody, uh, the Jewish lady, Mrs. Kamala Imhoff, a.k.a. Kamala Harris, who is also being Jew, uh, black. And, you know, I met a father one time in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. He's a Hindu. He said he was Caucasian Irish and Caucasian Hindu and had no black folk in his family. So would but you somehow say Kamala mother's Harris being black to get into Howard? Yeah. And law school, probably as well. Well, I don't know about the law school, but she faked it for Howard. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, uh, some people are going along with it as she fakes her way into being a heartbeat away from the White House and considering Mr. Fall down. So, the guy who was faking being black, you know, since he's so against affirmative action, then why, how about he give back his degree? Because it was you got it on false pretense. Well, you it can't um, give it back because it's in your head. What do you call it? Um, um, when they take when they take away your credentials, what do you call it? When they what when they take well, it, you need a license. Well, he's licensed, but the his education was gotten under false premises. How about? You know, maybe if he got scholarships, he should be paying that money back. Because you know, well, maybe it was fraud. No. But somebody has to go against him, and the statute of limitations is probably run on that. But I mean, it happens all the time. I had some people on my show when I first started. I thought they were ordinary American black folk. They weren't. They were Hindu. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, it this also came to mind too because. If it's so easy, I think another reason why it was easy for him to check off black and to be admitted because real black Americans are not applying to medical school or to college to major in biology. How about we start pushing our children for engineering, for biology, for medicine or whatever so that we could fill up those spots? There are a lot of opportunities, especially for young black boys, young black males coming out of high school, um, with, uh, Morgan State and a lot of other HBCUs and other colleges, they are literally looking for young black males to come into their engineering program from undergrad. There are a lot of opportunities for black people that are not being utilized in the education system. I don't, we're not pushing our kids there because you said it before too. Um, in the height of Jim Crow, we had the most lawyers, doctors, engineers, professionals. Now that, you know, segregation is over with, you see a decline in doctors, lawyers, engineers when it comes to black Americans. So I think we need to revitalize that because, yeah, if you Indian or anybody else and it's an opportunity, why not lie if it's easy? I know for a fact that my grandkids father is going to check off black when it's time for them to go to college to get scholarships. You know what I'm saying? He, 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 cause he bounces back and forth. So again, if it's there, we need to start taking advantage of it and stop complaining when other people do do it, take advantage of it. What are your thoughts? Yeah. All of the above, but you see, we perpetrated ourselves because we're so susceptible to it. 
Yeah. It, especially if it's somebody in a position that we want somebody to be in. There was a woman who claimed to be black who was an NAACP chapter president. She looked blacker than Kamala Harris and some other folk. But we have enough NAACP chapter presidents who are black. So I guess nobody gave a damn. So they were all up in arms because she claimed to be black. Hell, she looked black to me. Maybe she had a lot to slip in her wood pile, so to speak. But then Kamala Harris, who really isn't uh, a nice Jewish housewife or professional she's wife. Yeah, I was about to say, she's more professional. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, why do so black people, why do we accept others to be us? Why do we do that when nobody accepts? us to be them why do we do that oh she black no she not first black vice president no she's not and by the way it ain't the first black somebody Barack, Barack Obama. First, by the way it ain't the first first somebody in a black fraternal or sorrel institution either hubert humphrey vice president under lyndon baines johnson and democratic party candidate for vice for U.S. president in 1968, was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha. So he was tall, balding, blue-eyed white guy, and that didn't make him black. So I mean, what are you doing? Anxious to get some history? So anxious you created? Um, I want to bring up. One more thing real quickly, right? NYU, speaking of race. Uh, NYU, NYU hosts anti-racism workshop open only to white public school parents, right? <laughs> New York University hosted a month-long anti-racism workshop geared towards white public school parents that allegedly barred people of color from joining in what legal experts claim was a violation of civil rights. The six month long workshop was designed specifically for white public school parents in New York City committed to becoming anti-racist and to collaboratively building equitable, powerful, multiracial parents communities in their schools and and begin in February a listing states a series. The series cost $360 per person and was hosted by the Education Justice Research and Organizing Collaborative of the NYU Metro Center. Um, while the non-delisted workshop description and sign-up sheet said it was not designed for white parents, it doesn't expressly state that people of color were forbidden from joining, right? So it's a program for you to learn how to not to be racist and to start multicultural programs in your all white community. Hey. <laughs> that so, means every time somebody Chinese comes up with something, they got to let everybody in or somebody Korean or somebody black has to let everybody in. Right. No, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem if it's for this particular session is white only, but why do you need a seminar to be an anti-racist? How about you just educate yourself on history? You know, world uh, history. Maybe that's what they want to do. Frankly, I don't care. <laughs> I just I just found it cute. I just found it cute. Oh, yeah. I'm using. 